Hey everybody, this is DM Mike, and today, finally, we're going to talk about music. Yes, music. This is a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a really long time, but got kind of wrapped up in Horde of the Dragon Queen, and it took a long time, over a year, to finally kind of get into this subject matter, because music, to me, is the number one thing for all my games, not just Dungeons & Dragons, but really any kind of role-playing game I do. Music takes front and center. Now this video is going to be geared more towards the veteran DM, but also the brand new DM who maybe wants to insert music into their campaigns, one shots, whatever the case may be. You wanted to bring it into some kind of role playing game and how do we do that and how do we kind of use it effectively? Now I think there's something we kind of need to ask ourselves in general is why do we want to use music? Why do we use it? Why do we use it at all in any of our campaigns? Why? Well, I think there's two reasons. There's actually a lot of reasons. Let's be honest, there's probably a top 10 we could do here all day and go on about, but I'm gonna only focus on two, the top two, I would say. And the first one is we really, I think, we want the cinematic experience. We want our games to feel almost like they're movies or television shows. That's how I've seen D&D as kind of an episodic adventure. But we want them to feel and we want our players or characters all to be swept up in those moments of betrayal or drama or rebirth or battles or whatever the case may be. We want them to be swept up in it and have that kind of movie quality feel to our games as if the soundtrack was being written for our players themselves. And I think the second thing, and these kind of are really close, like if you put them on a graph, one's like a hair above the other really, but I think the second thing is, is verisimilitude. We really want our games to feel real. We want to, we're trying so desperately to make our players or even ourselves as DMs really feel like we're in that environment. Uh, that's why we have virtual tabletops and music and ambience and all kinds of things we try to bring into our games so players can really feel connected to the world. But here's the thing, here's the scope of this video. I'm not here to tell you that your fun is wrong. This is just my personal opinion on how I think we can run music in our campaigns a little a little more effectively. Now, of course, what music is there to express feeling, to express mood. We feel that all the time when we're watching movies or television, animation, uh, our TV series, or you know whatever else, fill in the blank, even video games, they rely on this music to help accentuate a moment, to help us guide us in our feelings. And it's really important in D&D that we, uh, we use music, I think, appropriately and effectively to help with those moments to help us feel the crescendos that happen in our games. So how do we do that? Well, here's the thing. Let me tell you this right off the bat. The most effective way to use music in a D&D campaign or any role-playing setting is to hardly use the music. Now, I know that sounds a little counterproductive, but hear me out on this. Um, I have tons of music. I have probably about like 100 plus different uh, uh, CDs and digital purchases that are all music. Probably close to what my Steam library is, even though that's pretty darn big. But I have tons of music, right? But the fact of the matter is I hardly really ever play music. The only time I play any kind of music consistently, and I have a curated list for this, is my battle music. That is the time where I feel like it's appropriate to play music on a consistent basis. It goes from one track to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, consistently, you know, because of the battle that's taking place. But here's the thing, when we start curating lists and we have like a whole list dedicated to this, this environment or this city or this town or this underwater thing or this cavern. What, let me tell you, I think what I think is happening at the table is that it becomes all your music and all this time you're spending on making those lists and listening to stuff and hoping that it, oops, hoping that it works. What I think you're really creating is D&D white noise, to be honest with you. Because I think after a while, people start to tune that out. I think a lot of players start to tune it out. Matter of fact, I'd say about your first hour will probably be pretty strong when you have all your music and you've got your playlist going. But after that, it becomes background noise. And suddenly the music doesn't become as effective anymore. People really aren't listening as much anymore. Two, what happens, and I see this constantly when people, and I'm, I don't really play a lot, but the games I have played where people are playing music, I've noticed this other thing where the music half the time doesn't even fit the scenario you're in, you know, and that really takes me out of the experience very, very quickly. And what we want to do is use music effectively, that it doesn't become white noise, but it becomes part of the storytelling process. So when we're playing just these long random things, I guarantee you players are starting to tune them out. 
Two, they're probably not even fitting the scene. And three, here's another common mistake I see. It's just my opinion, right? A common mistake I see is people playing really popular music. For instance, Lord of the Rings. Let me tell you, you will never hear Lord of the Rings at my table. This is not something I'm going to do. Now, one would think that, wait a minute, Mike, that's fantasy music. That is perfecto. It should work in any scenario. But I would argue that, no, it, it, it doesn't. Now, maybe it's working for your players. If, if it is, don't worry about it. But I think for most people up in here, it takes them out of the moment. And they're thinking of Frodo. And they're thinking of the ring. And they're thinking of Lord of the Rings. They're not thinking about what's going on at the table. So it's very easy. I've seen this many, many times. Matter of fact, I recently had this happen to me and it was a complete mistake. I can't believe I had done it, but I had a long list. I went on to an Adventures League night and about two years ago, I was running a game and one of my very specific tracks was from the soundtrack from Fable. And I was sitting there and this one particular track came up and out of the blue, Right when it was playing, about 10 seconds in, someone at the table goes, hey, I know that uh, that piece of music. That's from Fable. And right there, the guy just broke my immersion, broke everything at the table. And guess what? That's all anybody was thinking about was Fable. And that was a mistake I made. So really, let's recap that really fast. We're just going to make these long lists that just play, 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 play. Your characters are tuning them out. They're not fitting the mood. And oftentimes we go to things we think will work like Lord of the Rings, but really it's kind of taking you out of the moment and actually making you think about something else. But yet you still want to feel that white noise. I get that. I understand that sometimes they could be a little quiet. Well, here's what I do instead uh, that I find helps for similitude. And that's ambient effects. Now, just like the music we find on YouTube, Pandora, blah, 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 whatever else you're searching, you can find ambient effects online as well. People have made these or created them or whatnot, or just have these lists that you can pull from. I think that is far more effective than playing music for hours on end in a city or whatever the case may be. I use these 95% of the time. 95% of my games are ambient effects with only about 5% really being music. And even then, not every game has music at all. Most of it's just ambient effects or, you know, my radio dramas and the ambient effects. You see, that creates for similitude. That creates, that really draws players in because they're hearing the sights and the sounds of wherever they're at, especially if like they're in a cavern or swamp or a rainforest or a temple. I mean, we can find that stuff all day on YouTube. And you can go to Bandcamp and you can find artists on there who are creating these ambient effects. I've got two albums from this guy here. And they're perfect. They're great. They, they work perfectly for me and for my players. So you don't have to fill the void, the silence at the table with music at all times. Because what happens is, as I said, you're losing the effectiveness of your music. So when you really want that special moment to arise, it's not as impactful. In my last a couple of camp a couple of sessions ago, I had one moment where you know, and I've talked about this in my campaign diary. This is just a great example. I rarely I had that whole time I've been using ambient effects on this particular session, but there was a moment where an NPC and a character were coming together, and they had been separated for months on end, real time, months. The player had been trying to chase down her fairy familiar, who had been captured, and I spent hours going through my albums and listening to music, try to find that one specific track that would resonate with my player, resonate with the feeling and generate the feeling that I needed, which is what music is. It generates those feelings, right? And just racking my brain trying to find that perfect track. And that's the only music I played that night was that one track. And the track was so powerful that my player was crying a lot and it almost brought me to tears. I had to like try to contain myself because I was running the game, but it was very effective. It would not have been that way had I just been playing music the entire time. It was handpicked. And, and look, I'm telling you, it's, it's prep, right? Though it's still prep. You have to sit there. I can't tell you how many hours I have sat and listened to all my soundtracks trying to figure out which ones I want to do, which track highlights a certain thing. Another great example is when my per, uh, players in Horde of the Dragon Queen went to the portal in Chapter 6. I didn't use any music. Well, I used, well... Let me walk that back. I used an ambient piece. This is another thing you can look at is ambient music. It's a new genre that I've kind of stumbled upon that has really kicked up the verisimilitude of my games. And they were walking it. So this, they were walking into the portal. The doors opened up and they're walking on this black obsidian bridge. All I did, all I did was play this one track 
from uh, this dark ambient piece. And I remember this happened several times. It's not to be bragging, but I'm just saying the effectiveness of music, right? This happened in several, several games. Someone would pause and say, oh my gosh, this feels so real. I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm there. Like things like that. Like they were just struck by the music because the music was there to accentuate what was going on at the table, right? Again, just another example of how we can use it. So this may be a little long-winded. It might be all over the place. Maybe it's not working for you. Look, if your players are loving it and you've got your list, you don't want to do any more work, I understand that. Just don't worry about all this. But if you want to change it up a little bit and start using, I think, music in a more impactful way to really highlight all those moments you're trying to capture, music specifically selected, set up, will help those moments and your games will start to feel more cinematic and your games will start to feel more real when you start to use less. The old adage, right? Less is more. And I think that is absolutely true when it comes to music. Because music, like I said, drives emotion. And it's almost like you're just using it too much. It's too much emotion, you know? It's too much stuff happening and unfolding at the table. So that's my tips, guys. I mean, it's kind of, it might be all over the place. I don't think it is, but you know, I've given you some reasons what I think happens at the table when we're using it too much and also, how to use it effectively to help you tell these stories that you're spending hours and hours creating. It might be a change for you to do this, to kind of pull back, but I guarantee you, you'll start to find more success in your storytelling. Games will become more impactful and players will remember specific moments far more when you have created and crafted that piece of music, that one little track to accentuate something instead of playing music you know, six hours straight. Now, my next thing for this music series uh, is to start talking about soundtracks themselves. Like, well, what are the soundtracks we can use? And I'll start highlighting some soundtracks. So maybe I'll do it every week, something to that effect, where I'll, I'll highlight a soundtrack and I'll talk about how I used it and what tracks are pretty beneficial, you know, and hopefully where you can purchase it as well. Anyway, hopefully that will help you now to find good music. Now, look, like anything else, the research you do for your games it's the same thing that applies to music. You gotta go out and research it. You gotta go on Bandcamp like I do, look for games, game music, just flip through, find the one that looks interesting, sample a few of the tracks and go, okay, wait a minute, I think I could use that. And then listen to the entire album and then purchase it. This, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now actually for Rise of Tiamat and for a couple other smaller campaigns I wanna do beforehand. I'm already investing in music. And that's how I run music. Even before I start a campaign, I will spend Quite a bit of money on music. I'll go out and buy somewhere between three and ten new soundtracks to help to to set the stage for the next thing, next campaign. I love this music. I'll put it all together and I'll start thinking about how I can apply it to the game, to certain moments, but also, of course, to my radio dramas. So I, I invest, as all DMs do, you know, in the things that we hope will create for similitude. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, the next few video, we'll see what the next video is. Most likely it'll be a soundtrack recommendation. I hope this has helped. If you have any other ideas, please put them in the comments below. All right, guys, that's it, and I'll see you in the next one.